Atlantic Destiny was out there adrift. The Destiny was on fire and had taken on water. It was uh, a long night to uh, see where the where the men were. You know, 31 men on the water, 32 men on the water. And we don't know where they are at the moment. You can tell by some of the pictures, the rough seas they were, they were in. Our Halifax Center was uh, was the one who received the call from the Atlantic Destiny. For, for eight meter seas, the, a story of a building is between 3.1 and, and 3.4 meters. So eight meters is almost three stories high. So if you want to see a wave coming towards you, it's almost the size of a three story building. One point during the fire, they couldn't locate the two engineers. For 30 minutes, they were looking for the engineer. A fire on board usually results in a loss of power. Um, taking on water usually results in a loss of power. Um, bad weather usually results in taking on water. The Atlantic Destiny had everything. And now they had to evacuate in the storm and high seas while also dealing with the fire on the vessel. It's, it's nighttime, it's pitch black, they're offshore. They're not, they're not close to, to anything. It's just blackness for them. I couldn't imagine the worst combination of circumstances. And it's pitch black, the motors are not going. It's, it's you just hear the wind howling. And as Trevor said, the clanking of, uh, of the, uh, the metal. And then you start hearing uh, the, the rotor uh, of the helicopters coming. It was around 11 o'clock at night that they started airlifting. So you're looking at a, a dark, complete night. All the other vessels around, there's nobody around at the time. At the, they did the distress call. And then we had four other, I think four or five other vessels show up. They we're sending messages to boats. We're broadcasting. The only way to safety is to be airlifted off the vessel. This is in Yarmouth when they're getting off the chopper. Seeing the members get off the helicopter in their survival suits gives an idea of, of how, how desperate the situation could have been and that they were prepared to, uh, to leave that vessel, get into the water. And it's, it's the most extreme that you can get on the water, in my opinion. And the fact that they were uniform members as, as well uh, at the end of the day made this story um, much, much more special. The vessel is, is all over the place because it, it has no control at all. And then you're winching up the individuals um, off the boat and uh, or the vessel. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it takes your breath away. Then you could hear the helicopters coming to the rescue. They knew then they were they were getting help. The members on board the vessel, they train every day because when it happens, there's no there's no training on the spot. It's it's the, the reaction has to be instant and it has to be correct or else you're just going to make the situation worse. They train every trip, every time they leave the wharf, and they leave the wharf to do this. They don't do the training at the wharf. And when they leave the wharf, they uh, do fire drills, uh, person overboard all that stuff away from the wharf and on the way out. So they've trained 17 times a year. Though the vessel was lost and all the crew got safely off the vessel and were home, went home to their families, thanks to the evacuation drills and the incredible efforts of the crew and the rescuers. It's the safety drills and the crew's ability to follow the procedures under what must have been incredible duress and in the high seas that got them off the vessel. Some of the men are uh, seen now today. We have one or two that could not go back out, and we had some that retired. It's a good news story for sure. Um, everybody made it home, which is which is the important part. Um, and it's uh, it's definitely a win for uh, for the members, both uh, with uh, 2182 and uh, with 1944.